Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 96, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Now let's just get right to it. We're going to pound out as many as we can every day until I clear out my email box. I swear to God. So let's start with F.E. Walmart. That's an interesting one. Uh, hi, Mark. I just wanted to share this pic of a flat earth shirt I just ordered from Walmart. That says a lot of Walmart is actually selling shirts now. And yeah, it's a uh, the earth is flat shirt. You can pick it up at uh, walmart.com. So it's from Q Rafik T. So very cool, uh, like 20 bucks, but still check it out if you get a chance. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. I'm a comedian, as you may have guessed from my e email address, which is comedianjeff at AOL.com. But I'm very serious about FE. First of all, let me say that I love your videos and the way you present the subject matter. My wife is not yet on board with me uh, with the Flat Earth. I am trying to sway her by starting to show her your videos. She doesn't have the time or attention span to be convinced slowly. Do you have any of your videos that get all the points across in a reader's digest manner quickly? And if not, can you recommend a video for me to show her which will have the best chance of getting her to believe in Flat Earth as fast as possible? I really want her to believe so that she doesn't think I'm crazy. Thank you so much, and thank you for all your hard work on the subject. All the best, Jeff. Okay, uh, if the Flat Earth clues don't do it quickly enough, which would surprise me, uh, I do have a set of videos, and they're not they're not mine. They're other people's. It's a compilation. It's called the Flat Earth Short List for New People. It's a playlist on YouTube, and I will make sure he gets a copy of that. So that goes into my to-do pile. This one's called Escape Velocity from Earth, Smoking Gun. Hi, Mark. I re re have recently opened my eyes to the Flat Earth concept, and like yourself, I can't debunk it. So like you did yourself, I investigated, questioned everything, and believe I have discovered a smoking gun I haven't heard on the internet as of yet. Through studies, the minimum escape velocity to leave Earth orbit is 25,000 miles per hour. With the moon 237,000 miles away and also the so-called gravity of the moon, which lifts the Earth's oceans, I would expect any spacecraft heading there on the midway point to start to accelerate. Would the Apollo spacecrafts not cover the distance involved in a little over nine hours instead of three days? Hmm, that's a good question. My reckoning could be wrong and stand here to be corrected. If there is anything to this, please investigate. Keep up the good work. Darren from Scotland. Huh. That's very interesting. 25,000 miles an hour. Yeah, but best speed supposedly ever we've done is like 18,000 miles an hour. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know. We'll have to look at that. Uh, this one's called Vatican. Okay, Mark, just because you asked for someone to write in and explain why the Vatican is in on it, the heliocentric lie, here I am doing this again. The answer is simply because they're Luciferians, at the very top, that is, always have been. Ask Rob to elaborate more on this when you see him. They've simply hijacked the faith in order to mislead people, twist and change the Bible, and more to the point, will do their best to perpetuate the globe, evolution, and aliens dash lie. It might be a few spelling mistakes in this email. I'm writing it on a phone with a broken screen, walking home after a rough night shift at work. Oh, and it's freezing as well. As always, keep it up. Love you, man. Yahweh is the true creator, and Yeshua is exactly the one he said he was. All the best for now, Johan. Cool. All right. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Mark, I'm watching your video on YouTube and respect your theory. I am just trying to understand why and what is the motivation behind all the countries to not let the people that occupy the world that it is flat. What benefit or motivation do they gain by not telling us or showing us proof that it's not round, but it's flat? <laughs> he's, he, by the way, he's stuck in a loop here. Uh, and he says, and if it's flat, why not just come out and tell her? Wow, he asked the same question three different ways. Wow, four different ways. Here it goes. Do they have something to lose or gain? Thank you for taking the time to read my email, and I hope you'll respond. Have a good day. And that's from Glenn. Uh, Glenn, I hope you're listening. It, it, look, it, it, we, it's been covered so many different ways, not just by me, by a whole bunch of people. It's about power and control. 
always has been. Uh, you can't be the ultimate power in the world if you're not the ultimate power in the world. Uh, you can't, uh, governments lose credibility, they lose clout if they all of a sudden admit that there was something much, much bigger than them that built this world, which is why I, one of my clues is literally called They Are Hiding God. Uh, pretty much says it all. Uh, if, if not God, a higher civilization, a higher power. So hopefully, hopefully Glenn will figure that out by now or do, do some more research, but it's in the clues. Watch the clues again. It's in there. This one's called gyroscopes. Hi, Mark. I'm still very much on the fence about all this scene merit on both sides. And this is genuine unbiased observation. I'm a bent up old ex UK Bobby. Oh, I get it. Old ex UK cop. But in my youth, I was a student private pilot and my dad was a private pilot too. I heard many people claiming that gyroscopes on an aircraft attitude indicator is proof of the flat earth as would you would expect to gain uh, altitude on a globe, but I don't see it as so. While I agree that on autopilot, the gyroscope may keep the aircraft straight and level, the altitude is determined by barometric pressure. I would suspect that submarine depths are determined and maintained by water pressure in the same way. In addition, so far as the gyro compass direction indicator goes, the manufacturers advise you to reset them against the magnetic compass after every turn and or every 15 minutes. I'm ready to accept I could be missing something on this issue. It would be keen to hear any thoughts you may care to share. Kind regards, Tony. Uh, when it comes to the gyroscope uh, equations, I would defer those to Globebusters and other people in that arena. So if anyone from Globebusters is listening, uh, please, by all means, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll read it back to him or shoot it off to this guy named Tony. <clears throat> this one's called Flat Earth Freebies. Uh, Mark, I went away from the four debunking videos, so I'll not be asking you questions referring to the content. Allow me to tell you about my path to enlightenment. As most of us do, we find a suggestion in our YouTube on the right-hand side pointing us to the Flat Earth Clues. This was about a month ago when I initially emailed you. So I bit and was hooked from the first clue. I sat through the remaining clues and then went into watching Rob Skiba's video discussing the same. Not to sound like a broken record, but everything started to fall in place and I couldn't get enough of the Flat Earth information. Yeah, you and a lot of people. So you have so many videos. I started cherry picking what I thought were the best sounding interviews, but then I said, screw it. I'm going all the way back to the beginning of Strange World. <laughs> oh man, that's a, that's, a, that's a while back. To Strange World 1. Uh, through the first few videos, as you know, had nothing to do with Flat Earth uh, whatsoever. I looked at more uh, like you were working out the kinks in your show and working with uh, Jonathan from Jersey. Don't want to butcher the spelling. I drive every day for work. So while I am driving my route, I listen to your shows. I can usually get to about three to five shows a day. Oh man, that's, oh, I do not recommend that. Have you me in your ear for eight hours? Oof, that's rough. I am currently on Strange World 42, loving the content and interviews. If you read this on air, I will know it. I won't know it until I get to that show. <laughs> I have a long way to go to catch up. Well, yeah, especially since the, what I'm reading on is not even part of Strange World. It's um, uh, he doesn't know that though. Uh, it's part of the Q and A shows. I do. You know, I'll 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 write him back and I'll say that I read this on Q and A 96. Uh, I do have a question about your uh, co-pilot, uh, John. Tell him I said hi, by the way, and thank him for me for his attempt at serving the country uh, as an 18X uh, exclamation point. He stated he lost 26 pounds over the three weeks in Strange World 41. I think it was, and he was on a special program that had him thinking more clearly. That was called Perceptions, by the way. Can you please tell me what regimen was that he was doing at the time. The time frame I'm referring to is around February of 2016, after the 2015 Christmas break, and he returned after the new year. One last comment, and I'm out of here. Has anyone stopped to question the flight instructors or pilots around the trim wheel in the aircraft that is used to maintain level flight? Won't this help the plane to stay level and not just fly off into space? Sorry if this was covered in future shows. Thank you for your time and consideration of this email. Great show until Jonathan from Jersey. I said, hey, much love and respect. Lash rack. Cool, man. All right, that's going to go into my to-do pile because if he's if he's waiting for me to read that, it's going to take a long time. Okay, this one's called questions about flat earth. 
and these are all recent. I'm, I'm basically clearing out anything in the last 48 hours, and then I'm just going to jump back. I'm, then I'm just going to start picking randomly around the weeks that I've missed. Uh, hi, Mark. Not sure if you got the first e email or if it went to your spam. In either case, I have a few more questions after watching some videos. How do you explain the magnetic South Pole? I don't. The Australian intelligence officer said it doesn't exist. If Antarctica is a ring, why not just fly in any direction other than south and hit that ring? Uh, you can, but the Antarctic Treaty is not going to let you go very far. Haven't there been people who have fl flown around the world? Yes, you can uh, fly around a dinner plate too. It doesn't mean that the dinner plate is a sphere. You know what I mean? Take your take any circular object. Uh, a plate's a perfect example, though. And you know, take your finger and move your finger around in a circle. Uh, you technically circumnavigated it. And the compass works fine if the compass is in the center. So I would love to hear responses to these questions and the ones below. Thanks, Jet. I don't know a lot of guys named Jet. It's cool though. Uh, this one's called Please Send Me the 12 Picks. That's from T-Pain. <laughs> nice. Nice rapper reference. Uh, this one's called Kyle, 22-year-old phone call. Hey, Mark, thanks again for picking up the phone today. Yeah, and I was, I was dropping my mother off at a doctor's appointment. And uh, I was in the car just waiting for, her in the, uh, waiting for her to come out. And I was picking up, I, I, when I'm, when I'm out and about and I have my phone with me, I will answer the phone, believe it or not. If I'm standing, sitting next to my computer, eh, probably not. Uh, most of the time anyway. Uh, I don't understand how people can think you're a shill. Just doesn't register in my head. Can you send me the survival guide, the coast to coast interview and the 12 slides, please? I think you do an extra extraordinary work that has truly touched the hearts of many. You have helped me upon so many, upon so many others to truly realize the lies we were being served on a silver platter. I would say we were spoon fed these lies, although they do it in such a fashion, it's almost comforting to believe them. Such, such a said, <laughs> all right, methodical process the elites go through to maintain the status of the world. Thanks again, Mark. And that's from Kyle. And Kyle's 22 years old. Awesome. This one's from a Soviet woman. And I cannot even begin to pronounce that name. Uh, wow, that is a tough name to pronounce. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to come up with um, a short version. I'll call her Yev uh, for now. Uh, my name is Yev. And I'm a film student uh, at Met Film School in Ealing, London. I'm currently producing a documentary about various, various flat earth societies. And we are looking for contributors to the interviews. I've watched your videos on YouTube. On your channel, I would love to have you as our main contributor in the documentary. The interviews will take place in the next few weeks. It could be done in person or in Skype. I am very open and curious about the possibility of Flat Earth. The documentary is not at all to mock the idea, it's just to explore the possibility of the Earth being flat. We are a lovely crew of young filmmakers. We would love to have you on this project. Please let me know if you have any more questions about it. My phone number is... is please call anytime if that's easier for you. Thank you for your time, Yev. And you know what? I'm going to put that in my to-do pile. And we will see how that goes forward. A lot of, lot of more documentaries coming. And that reminds me, of course, uh, if you want to watch something for the holidays, check out the Behind the Curve film documentary. You can go to BehindTheCurveFilm.com and you can order it on all the major streaming channels and show it to your family. In fact, uh, Peanut Gallery watched it yesterday for the first time. And he told me exactly what I was hoping, which was, he said, you know what, if, uh, if this is the first, if you, if you wanted to introduce somebody to the flat earth topic, he goes, I can think of nothing better than this movie. I go, yeah, I go, I've seen it many times now in multiple theaters in different parts of the country and other country, uh, where it, it, people, they get flat smacked. They're engaged for almost a hundred minutes. And when they're done, they have a whole bunch of questions. It plants the seed. Uh, as a, you know, as a hardcore flat earther, will you like it? No, probably not. But if you're sitting in a room full of family members and you want to see if you can get them on board, that's why I show them. And I'm saying this, I'm not making a dime off that thing. I mean, I, yeah, I'm in it a lot, but I'm not making a dime. Anyway, this one's called flat earth. Hey bro, it's Jack house. I'm just, I'm going to attach a picture of me. I'm on Facebook. I have 4,999 friends now anyway. Thank you for all your info, man. Hit me back when you get a chance. This is me the other night. I found an elk head at the Elks Lodge and used the horns to be cool uh, and funny. Thanks, brother. Okay, let me click on view and hopefully it's not too big a picture. It's three megs. 
and it's <laughs> it's good. He, he took a picture of him in front of the Elkhorns. It's funny. It's good stuff. Thanks. All right. This one's called Inside the Flat Earth Conference, where the world's oldest conspiracy theory is hot again. And yeah, that's an article that everyone should probably check out if you get a chance. Uh, they released a teaser article, and that's from the dailybeast.com. Uh, so, but it, the article is literally called Inside the Flat Earth Conference, where the world's oldest conspiracy theory is hot again. And let me click on it real quick because I want to make sure I give credit to it. It's from Kelly Well. And she, the reason why you should, you should click on it, and I'll mention this tonight on the show, is because she got a hold of uh, Logan Paul outside the conference center, literally on Thursday. And she started asking him flat earth questions, and he couldn't answer a single one. And his his use of grammar was was unbelievably horrible. And I, uh, you know what? I, I might even mention the. Hang on one second. Yeah, I had to pause that for like one second just so I could find the quote. And I will mention this tonight during the show. And here's why: uh, you know, she has the video clip on there. And you know it's bad when our trolls, like uh, uh, one of our troll channels that's out there, MGTV, when when he's actually saying, "Oh yeah, you really don't want to be tied to this guy." Uh, it, this, there's a line. She actually uh, wrote it. Not only is it on video and you can listen to it, but it's it's one line. And it's like, so hang on one sec. Yeah, the line is right below the video and it says, and this is his quote verbatim. To me, it's just so obvious that obviously the earth is flat, obviously. 13 words in that sentence. Three uses of the word obvious. Unbelievable. Anyway, check out check out that article if you get a chance. Again, I'll mention it tonight during the show. Okay, next time. Next one, Flat Earth question. Hello, Mark. I would like to ask you a question that I can't seem to find an answer in my Flat Earth research. Back in 1997, the hale -Bopp comet came by the Earth here in Southern California. It was visible in the sky for an entire month. Every night, I would see it in the sky. And as the night wore on, it would get lower and lower until it disappeared be below the horizon. The next night, there it was again, uh, it repeated this same pattern for a month. As the month wore on, its position was slightly lower every night until finally it disappeared below the horizon, was no longer visible to the people in the Northern Hemisphere, and became visible to people in the Southern Hemisphere. The comet did not change in size the entire time I observed it. Considering how comets, comets apparent motion night after night, disappearing and reappearing the next night, it would suggest that either the comet was doing loops around the Earth or the Earth itself was rotating. I would greatly appreciate your input on this as possible. Thanks for your time. Sincerely, Eric Boyd. Uh, no, no, no. The sky, is, the sky is moving. The Earth is not. Uh, the comet, if, if it is, if you do d see it in two different, two different perspectives, it's either that the sky is being instanced. And I know you have to be a software developer to understand that, con that, that context, multiple projection systems, uh, Southern hemisphere, Northern hemisphere. Look, if you're in a small enough structure, like a stadium, like, you know, just a real earth stadium or planetarium, you can get away with one projection system because literally you can yell from one side to the other and people will hear you. But if the structure is even a hundred miles wide, you can't really do it with one projection system. I mean, I suppose you could, but the whole thing would have to be instanced anyway, um, which means you would have multiple objects, multiple uh, versions of the same object. And since people would be far enough apart, they'd both see what they thought were the same thing, but they're actually they're seeing two instances of the exact same thing. Uh, kind of hard to explain in a podcast like this, but look it up if you get a chance. This one's called Guess on the Non Sequitur Show. And I, 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 I meant, I think they're pretty sure you have to say guest. But they had spell checker kick in and they didn't proofread it. So the title is literally Guess on Non Sequitur Show. And that was sent to me by Steve McRae. Steve, please check your um, your sent files and note what you just did there. Uh, hey, Mark, I believe you said you would be willing to come on Non Sequitur Show to engage with, with Red's rhetoric or someone similar. Would you still be interested to do that in December? That's from Steve McRae, co host of the Non Sequitur Show. Uh, no. I have never said once that uh, I would be on the non sequitur show. I'm sorry, you guys played Dirty Pool. It's a it's a rigged game. You're awful people. <laughs> I mean, there's other people that are worse, I suppose. But the fact that you have Red's rhetoric is you know championing championing your cause, it does not help you. 
Uh, in fact, I've said that on uh, somebody called in, but could have been Steve, called into my show and said, uh, you know, ask the same thing. No, 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 I'm not going to be doing the non sequitur show anytime soon. I actually hope that other people, I mean, yeah, if you got a wild hair up your butt, I suppose you could uh, do, you know, if, if you really felt like debating and you had no other outlets and you really, it's like, I got to get a debate in. Sure, go on that show. Just be prepared that you in no way will be treated fairly when you do this. And um, and the people they have debating, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a gang fight and it never ends well. But no, 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 and no. Moving on, this one's called You Must Be So Proud. And this is from one of my regular trolls. I actually get emails from this guy at least two a month, I think. It's from a guy named Bob Monroe. And his email address, just so you know, is Bob underscore Monroe, M-U-N-R-O, at Mac.com. And he he literally has one line. It's, it's like, they aren't laughing with you, fool. And it's what he's referring to is The Daily Show with Lewis Black. The, that's If you type in Flat Earth right now and, and have no filters, The Daily Show, uh, um, his little thing's called Back in Black. And I actually was a fan of Lewis Black. I think his, his uh, comedy delivery is fantastic. I've always, always loved his, he's got the, some of the greatest outrage in, in inflection in his voice. And I've always liked his stuff. And so when he came after Flat Earth, hey, great. And the, the compilation that they put in there was great. They had the, the conference, well, not really much of the 2018 conference, which is where they even used some of the 2017 conference. Um, Patricia Steer was in there from her CBS interview. I mean, they cheated a bit. They just grabbed, there's so much content out there nowadays that you could write so many articles on Flat Earth. And all you'd have to do is uh, grab old content from from various news pieces. So uh, I, I actually wrote him back and uh, said, "What? You know, I actually didn't hate the Lewis Black piece. I mean, yeah, he was mean and all that, but uh, sorry, and I will take a dig here. At least he wasn't pretending to be a flat earther and showing up at our conference." Uh, so you can make pieces like that all day long, and that people have for the last few years, and I love it. You know, the, the, those sort of ripples we like, uh, as long as he's not, you know, Lewis Black isn't representing us or attempting to great. Fantastic. Moving on. This one's called mountains of water. Hi, Mark. Can you email me back? What show you have or may discuss my original email below? Great statement you made at the FE 2018. More of this should happen as under no circumstances should people like so-called a lister, ever get airtime yeah yeah that was my, my point exactly and i will again mention it on the show tonight which is um that, sorry you you can't it, it, again it's one thing it's one thing to have somebody let, we'll just use pewdiepie for example pewdiepie um to make videos about us which is great you know he's got a ton of, of followers and you know when he makes videos against us like a lot of people have it just generates interest it's a whole nother thing to have pewdiepie come to the conference and say that he's a flat earther which of course you would never want to believe because he is a professional troll and because no one's going to believe him everyone's going to think he's punking him so and and honestly i i think pewdiepie would probably even get a better interview it was just um uh, that Logan Paul literally 30 minutes before he was on stage was giving probably the worst uh, flat earth interview I've ever heard in three plus years that I've been doing this uh, by anyone. Uh, um, rapper B.O.B., for example, we all know that he's he's not very good in interviews. And when he tried to talk about flat earth, you know, he was, he was stumbling and hitting hurdles pretty much every two seconds. Rapper B.O.B. is freaking Shakespeare compared to logan paul logan paul can barely string any words together to make a sentence and i think that one where i mentioned obvious three times in 13 words yeah if that's what you're leaning on no no and and, and plus i'm oh, sorry i think that was like the best line he had the rest of me couldn't even get through it without laughing which kind of lets you know where he's going with this and no, I'm not being a dead horse. I'm going to keep doing this until the, the the Logan Paul headlines go away. Anyway, moving on. This one's called, I got to know. Mark, when you lived in Boulder, Colorado, did you ever drive by the Mork and Mindy house? Flat is where it's at. That's from Frank. Uh, no, I never did drive the, by the Mork and Mindy house. And I probably should have at one point. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mork and Mindy was a sitcom in the 1970s. I think it bled over maybe into 1980 or a little bit in the 1980s, but it was uh, starring Robin Williams. 
and which was also Mark, Mork and Mindy was a spinoff of the Mork from Ork character, which originally aired on Happy Days when Happy Days was running out of ideas and way past the jumping the shark episode. They introduced Mork the alien that only I believe only Richie could see at some point. I think Fonzie ended up seeing him in the end. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the point was is that the show was theoretically set in Boulder, Colorado. And the reason why people I got so much grief about it is because my sister's name is Minda, short for Melinda. And so my name is Mark, so Mark and Minda, Mork and Mindy. And yeah, you see where that went. And so, yeah, for a couple of years, he was like, oh, it's Mork and Mindy. Heard that quite a bit. Super, super fun. But interesting enough, yeah, when I... um. When I got into the video game stuff, that's where I ended up going. Not Southern California, but Boulder, Colorado. Small world. Small flat world, anyway. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. I would like... To, I look forward to your weekly radio shows and also your Q&As. Keep them coming. Cheers, eh? That's from Allison in Canada. And, yep, I sent her the Survival Guide. And now she had her email written. Oh, let's see here. This one's called Urgent. Nigerian Prince Needs Your Help. <laughs> This is a joke email, by the way. Uh, hey, Mark, just wanted to say that I respect what you did at the conference. You have more balls than our solar system. Oh, that's funny. Uh, like you and just about everyone else, I was expecting an A-lister and celebrity and could not wait to see who it was. Definitely the total opposite. If he was truly about FE, then he wouldn't be worried about his brand. Yeah, which he mentioned on stage. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, when I put my name, you know, he's a, oh, don't want to get me started again. I'll be, it'll be interesting to see how far he'll go with the FE movement. He won't because he can't talk about it. He cannot talk about it. He's literally, um, uh, he has, he knows no FE knowledge whatsoever. Uh, I, I'll use the Just Jack comment. Which, uh, which he, he just Jack was interviewing with him, and uh, Jack asked him who his favorite YouTuber or uh, favorite um, flat earther was, and he literally could not answer it. He, he was just like dancing around. He knew nobody in the flat earth community. It's like I don't know what about the conference promoter that you've just been spending all this time with, Robbie Davidson. Robbie Davidson's a flat earther, and he makes content a whole bunch of it. One of the bigger channels. You didn't even mention him. This guy's bad. So terrible. Uh, I like the fact that you're doing email episodes every day until you're caught up and add this one to it. Ha ha. <laughs> Unfortunately, not a Nigerian prince with a lot of money. Thanks, Jason. Yep, that's fine. This one's called U.S. Military is testing stratospheric balloons that ride the wind so they never have to come down. And that is literally the name of the article. It's from technologyreview.com. Uh, DARPA is testing stratospheric balloons that ride the wind so that they never have to come down. Just passing along this link, thought it might be of interest. Cool. Next one is called, and this one just came in as I started doing this one. It's called FE 2018. Dang, you left. Sad face. Hi, Mark. From one peaceful warrior to another, I was happy to see you again in Denver, if only for a short time. It is always a pleasure to chat with you. You have such great energy. Really sorry to hear about all the ramifications of the mystery guest and his effect upon you and your participation in the conference. You were definitely missed. I heard you share your experiences on a show and feel sad that you had to go through all that. Those experiences have helped shape the strong man of conviction, which you are today. And I respect that as I hear uh, so many others who share the same sentiment. Sentiment. I understand after hearing your side, you did what you did uh, out of personal principle. For that, I commend you. When one stands on one's own principles and convictions, there can be backlash as others may not agree or approve. I also haven't understand the other side of your decision to leave had upon the others. As they say, everyone experiences their own side of an interaction and everyone has their truth about it. Hopefully everyone will understand each other's position so that everything can proceed as before as we all move forward as the only thing which is important here is the truth. We should not be wasting time nor energy on anything else that takes away from spreading that truth. Continue to be the light and shine on. Peace, love, and light. That's from Bronca. She's up in Canada, and I did have a chance to spend time with uh, Bronca and Jim, her husband, who was not a flat earther, but he was he was there nonetheless. So thank you. Thank you for that. That's much appreciated. All right, moving on. Let's do this one called FE. Hey, Mark, haha. Ha. No, I just found it online, bought a copy of Amazon. Just published, it was published in 1903. It was written by G. Shia Pirelli 
a well-known astronomer back in the day, I take it. And it's called, what's the book called? Uh, book called Astronomy in the Old Testament. Huh. Yeah, interesting. Moving on. This one's called Believer. Hey, Mark. All good, my friend. Hope you and yours are the same. Is there a forum of some kind where I can speak to like-minded people? Uh, I have all the usual thrown at me. If I say anything in public, then I uh, have to write it off as a joke. I'm sure you understand, my friend. Hopefully speak soon, Steve. And yeah, uh, you could go to uh, enclosedworld.com. There's a forum there. There's, there's forums everywhere. Uh, just type in Flat Earth Forum into, into Google. Uh, I would probably stay away from IFERS, the International Flat, uh, uh, Flat Earth Research Society. I would stay after Generic Flat Earth Society. Uh, and try to stick with with people that have social media content, people that have made a lot of, of YouTube videos. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. I was wondering if you could forward on a copy of your Survival Guide. Thank you. Also, I write electronic music. Would love to write something for your intro. Buffer music since you do so much online without asking for the same. Here's some music for you to check out if you like the style. And is tesseracts.bandcap.com releases. Keep up the great work, and thanks for the survival guide, Brian. Yep, happy to do it. This one's called Coast to Coast. Mark, read or don't, <laughs> you can send me the Coast to Coast shows. Don't know why I haven't asked you yet. Laziness, I suppose. P.S. Unrelated. Do you play Fortnite? Me and my 11-year-old son have a pretty good time with it. I want to join Want to join us up sometime. It is now, uh, but it's, it is, oh, you know, it's not WoW. Sorry, it's not WoW which is World of Warcraft, but it's entertaining nonetheless and free. That's from Donnie in Chicago. Um, I've got nothing really against Fortnite. M Minecraft, I think, is an abomination because the, the graphics are so unbelievably blocky, and I know they did it deliberately, but it's a step backwards in, in the gaming world, in my opinion, because it's like it's like working with Lego blocks. It's like working with freaking eight, not even 8-bit, like 4-bit graphics that were just pumped up for uh, for PCs. And I know you can play it on a phone and stuff like that. Uh, Fortnite, uh, sorry, that, I'm rattling on about Minecraft. Uh, Fortnite is just another first-person shooter with pretty graphics. And uh, it's it's like taking those dark first-person shooters and, and amping it up to where the colors are more candy, candy colors. Uh, so it's more visually friendly. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm really jaded when it comes to first-person shooters. Uh, and I like the single player. My, one of my favorite games of all time is Fallout 3. And I know Fallout 4 is out there, but Fallout 3 is, oh my god, the graphics in Fallout 3, the storyline, but the, the music is just haunting. Uh, it, is, it is a beautifully bleak game. And uh, it, it was, it was, and I played all the expansions and all the best mods. And uh, so, no, I'm not going to be playing Fortnite anytime soon. I, I barely even, I mean, I log into my Warcraft account from time to time just to spread the word because my guild name is called Flat Earth. And so when I'm running around, I have Flat Earth in, in my title pretty much all the time. So, yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm doing, I'm, you know, fighting the Flat Earth War on a regular basis. So just, I just don't have time to play another game right now. War, World of Warcraft is about it. I'm pretty sure it's going to wind down. If you guys haven't figured that out by now, anyone that's playing, since they were bought out or merged or whatever you want to call it with Activision, uh, yeah, Warcraft and everything else is going down in flames, finally, after a quarter century. Which, hey, they, they had a good run. Not just a good run, the best run. All right, this one's called Question. Hello, Mark. First of all, thanks for your sharing your videos. Now straight to the point. Can you confirm that the footage of the NASA Apollo missions are lost, as well as the navigation data recorded for the systems in flight? Thanks, uh, VV. That's actually his name's Victor. Uh, yeah, not only... Well, here's the thing. Not only the, the telemetry trade, they were all fake. The reason why they're lost is because they weren't real to begin with. They were all fabricated. That's why you had to get rid of them. You had to destroy the... Um, all the all the all the data tapes, all the telemetry tapes from the Apollo missions and Mercury and Gemini and everything else, because some nerd would have dug into them and said, "Hey, this data seems really really weird." Uh, if you have any idea what I'm talking about, look at the movie Capricorn One when the lone engineer engineer looked at the telemetry data, said there was something wrong, and they ghosted him to where he was literally gone. Off, he was killed off camera and erased. He was erased from existence. So you know, of course. You'd have to get rid of the Apollo data. You would have to. I would too. 
Uh, this one's called P900 Gifting. Mark, since I live in Maui now and the skies are basically chemtrail-less all day and night, I really want to get into shooting footage 24-7. That stated, if you guys know anyone gifting a P900 because they have upgraded to the 1000 or higher in telescope, please let me know. Even if you guys know someone selling those on the cheap, please pass the info along. Thank you. Yeah, so if anybody, um, when he sent this, he sent this to Jaredism and uh, DITRH and, and other people. Uh, yeah, I, the P900 is not a cheap rig, and so anyone that upgraded to the P1000, they're probably going to be selling it to help pay for the P1000. Uh, but if anyone knows, you know, someone that's selling it for relatively cheap, let me know. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll give out this email, guy's email address real quick. It is, um, it is MatthewRosa27 at gmail.com. So it's Matthew, R-O-S-A 27 at gmail.com. All right. Where else are we going with this? And I am just barely into October. Okay, more Flat Earth supporting documentation. Hello, Mark. Greetings to you. I recently saw your video, The Man Who Saw Flat Earth. I enjoyed it. Thank you for making it. I am sending you some supporting documents from what Augusta, August Picard saw 75,000 feet in the air. One, world, world world's oldest literature, the Vedas written 5,000 years ago, about 3102 BC, clearly states that the earth is flat and that it bends up at the edges. Uh, Vedas are volumes of literature that Hindus consider as the holy book. They comprise uh, of hundreds of books. There's one book called the Simarad Bhagavad, uh, whatever, uh, which talks about the structure of the universe in the book, verse 5.16.5, uh, states the earth is flat and it bends up at the edges, just as what Picard saw in the air. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the planetarian system uh, resembles a lotus flower, and its seven islands resemble resemble the whirl of that flower, the length and breadth of the island known as, and I'm not going to pronounce that, which is situated in the middle of the whirl are 100,000 it's um, units of measurement, which is 800,000 miles. Wow. That's huge. Uh, if you look at the leaf of the lotus flower, it is round and the edges are bending up. Uh, please see attached fo photo, so on and so on. Let's see if there's anything else here. And basically some definitions. Huh, please keep it up. K Shukla. Awesome. All right, this is called Your Opinion on the Helicopter and Telescope Test with the Discovery Channel. Oh, boy. Uh, Mark, it showed 24 feet of curvature at six miles. I saw the video on YouTube with the two girls and the guy doing an experiment on the lake. They did a laser test uh, that they did with the helicopter. Your thoughts? And that's from D. Holmaster Sherlock. <laughs> uh, no, no, it was absolutely fabricated. Uh, it was, I mean, the, the, the whole show, the Discovery Channel, it was meant... It was, it was a production. That was all it was. I mean, first of all, you would never, ever use a helicopter to do this. Uh, and two, in fact, in fact uh, we broke it down. Look it up. There's, I'm not going to be able to do it justice here. Look it up online uh, in YouTube. Uh, Discovery Channel Flat Earth. Just type that in and you will see various people that have broken it down. Uh, but all of it was edited. There's, there was no way in a million years that that test was real, and it was all hype, everything. In fact, I'm pretty sure they had Stephen Hawking, like, consulting on it. And it was all demographically perfect, and it was, yeah, it was a, it was an interesting show, but no, no, not, not a chance. And, of course, saying that, you know, the, even though the National Geographic thing should now be coming out. I mean, they, they've announced the teaser for it. So it's going to be hopefully coming out before the end of the year. It should have been, it should have, I was told it was going to happen before the conference. And what do you know, producer changed their mind. And now it's going to come out uh, probably in December. And I will be in there uh, talking to them about the Salton Sea experiment. This one's called South Pole. Mark, howdy, brother. I was recently cruising around online when I came across EOS Expeditions. They offer extreme adventure expeditions around the world. Uh, Svalbard, Northwest Passage, and the South Pole. How would this fit in vis-a-vis -vis to the FE model, given that tourists aren't allowed in Antarctica? No, 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 no. Okay, first off, every... Where... Did, who has told you? Find me a video that says the tourists 
aren't allowed to go to Antarctica. I said in the very first uh, series of clues, you can go to Antarctica right now. You can spend the 10,000 American or 15,000 American and go down to Antarctica and have your picture taken with picture taken with uh, penguins at the peninsula and have all that fun stuff done. However, if you want to go into the interior, in fact, you could have a guided tour to the South Pole, but they're telling you what the South Pole is, and you cannot run off on your own. You cannot do any explorations without a huge amount of paperwork and money and time. Uh, because remember, Antarctica is governed by a whole bunch of different nations deliberately uh, to keep it as convoluted as possible. No, as a tourist, you can actually go to Antarctica. That's not the problem. The, the bigger problem is, is why can't any corporation in the world ever set up shop in Antarctica? And by that, I mean the 1959 Antarctic Treaty, which says that no corporation can go down there and start ramping up whatever they want to do. It doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter um, how, how much you lobby, you can't, you're not even allowed to talk about it. So how is that possible? And I went into depth into that on during the clues. And then Rob Skiba did some wonderful videos and other people. People have done a whole bunch of videos along these lines. Sorry. Moving on. This one's called Hey Mark. Steve, New York City, the Kyrie Irving is a great thing. Very little updates in the common press since 20 months ago. So the statement of his is keeping the attention front and center. Uh, nonetheless, very clever. Yeah, when he wrote this, what he was talking about was Kyrie Irving going and on the Forbes, I'm not going to, I'm not going to butcher this, uh, 30 under 30. So they talk to basically wealthy people under the age of 30. And I think Kyrie Irving's 26 now, I think 26. And they were, they were talking to him and they, it wasn't on camera. This was just in an audience and somebody in the audience was filming this. And he, of course, of course, they're going to bring up the flatter thing to him. And he apologized to the science uh, teachers that were out there, basically high school, urban high school science teachers, because Kyrie Irving is a huge role model in the urban sector of any city. He is. He's, he's one of the top players in the game. He's got an amazing crossover, amazing ball skills, can shoot the three. Very, very good uh, guy. He's already got his guy's championship ring. He played with LeBron. Uh, he was great. And uh, but and so when a science teacher goes in front of this class and says, oh, yeah, the earth is a globe. And all of a sudden you had all these kids that are pushing back on him going, no, my man Kyrie says it's not a globe. And I, I respect Kyrie's opinion a lot more than I do yours. Now, the respect for that opinion is based off of money and prestige and, and his, his position in celebrity status. But as we know, that happens, happens a lot in this world. And so Kyrie had science, has had science teachers for the last 18 months coming at him and, and saying, look, man, you're, you're killing me. <laughs> you're just killing me. I have to go into my class. And because of what you said about the flat earth, uh, I've got all these people. So Kyrie said, look, I'm sorry to the science teachers. He's, he's not backing off. You know, he's still a flat earth. Listen to that interview very, very carefully where he's going, look, you know, I'm sorry, you know, but it just, it, it was going to happen. There was going to be some, some pushback there. And so he was sorry about that. Now he, of course, he's still a flat earther. And even if he quit flat earth today, it wouldn't matter. I mean, he's got 18 months. I mean, look at, um, uh, Ky or, um, Shaquille O'Neal. He was, uh, only in flat earth for 10 days. And those stories are not, never going away. They will, they will be there for a long, long time. Uh, this one's called, Why I Don't Believe the Seasons Don't Look Correct on a Globe Earth. Mark, I'm the one who does not believe the Earth is a globe. In fact, your clue videos pretty much convinced me of that. I've been studying Flat Earth now for a couple of years, and one thing stands out in my mind is, a, is the way they show the seasons. They always show a picture like this and showing the, the sun in the, in the tiny sun in the center and then four positions of the globe around it, like we're orbiting around. Um, I look at it and it seems wrong to me. I'd like to explain to you what I mean. I don't want to waste any more of your time. If you aren't interested, we can leave it here. If you are interested in what I think, please email me to let me know and I'll explain it to you. Thanks, Rodney Baker. And yeah, I will see what else he's got there. It's not a cliffhanger. I mean, he showed me most of it. You're probably saying, oh, it's a cliffhanger. Don't respond. It's like, no, no, no. He sent me a graphic, but he didn't want to go into a full explanation on it. This one's called $6,000 Challenge. And the wheel is spinning. Come on, Xfinity. I've got massive bandwidth. What's taking so long? 
Uh, hi, Mr. Mark. I love the FE info in the YouTube videos. Where can I get a copy of the FE challenge for my school? Please let me know. Thanks, Dennis. I don't even know uh, if there is an FE challenge anymore because no one, no one will take take us up on it. Uh, you can you can try to get a hold of Zen Garcia and his his group. So check that out if you get. I think his show is called Secrets Secrets Revealed. Check that out if you get a chance. This one's called Picture, if you will. Picture, picture. I'm supposed to enhance that because some somebody says she doesn't like the way I say picture. And that's because I'm doing a soft C. Uh, picture, if you will, the Twilight Zone. Oh, I get it. Because Rod Serling would say, well, he'd say, imagine if you will, picture this road sign up ahead. Uh, hi, man, hi, man, hi, Mark. I don't know if you read my last email, but I'm listening to more of your YouTube radio broadcast, and I think it's a great show. I just want to throw this one out there, uh, just a bit of fun, but while I was watching and listening to one of your broadcasts tonight, out of nowhere, this came to my mind. As a young boy, I used to love watching The Twilight Zone. I'm sure you know of the program and, and one of the animations you put up. I know a few things about The Twilight Zone, yeah. Uh, the one with the sun flying around the universe with our planets corkscrewing around it. Yep, everyone knows that one. Uh, I just thought it would be cool and funny if you had that animation with the soundtrack and voiceover, the Twilight Zone picture, if you will. Oh yeah, that wouldn't be bad. That'd be good. I know if it's, uh, uh, I don't know if it's just me. You may not find it funny, but I think it's quite funny. Well, depending on if the person watching it is flat or a globe kind of person. Uh, I know you have bigger and better things to be reading, but I thought it would try to lighten up your day with a little fun. Take care after you and each other. Kind regards, Bay and Andy. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It's B-A-E. B-A-E? Bay? Ba? Yeah, whatever. This one's called Firmament Picks. Hi, hey, Mark. How are you? wondered if you might find these picks interesting. They were taken in England, London. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. <coughs> Sorry, I was laughing because he put England in front of London. Uh, the light appears to be behind the clouds and yet strong enough to shine through the other clouds. Oh, yeah. That is weird. That's some interesting picks. Huh. All right, I'll save those. I don't know if they're worthy of a thumbnail, but they're pretty good. This one's called Mark, Take a Look, How to Tell Time by the Moon. It's a video on YouTube by Kennedy. And it says, how to tell time by the moon, full training manual, only works on the flat earth model, best proof ever. All right, I will check that out when I get a chance. Thank you for that. This one's called, why Duncan? Why Duncan? Hi, Duncan. Uh, oh, okay. So what, every once in a while, someone will write a letter to... Um, uh, a different place and they'll carbon me on it. So he wrote to the editor of nexusmagazine.com and apparently this guy's name is Duncan. And I do get, I get carbon on some of these, which is fine. You can do that as well. I, I sometimes will read those. Uh, Hi Duncan, I've been a Nexus Magazine subscriber now for almost 30 years and I'm a huge fan. Just received the October, November 2018 new edition of Nexus Magazine. It looks like a great one. I especially like the part about the Big Bang Theory being a huge con job, much like the theory of evolution. But I have to say, one thing that perplexes and stuns me about your magazine, Duncan, and that I find very hard to believe is that you've never, ever talked about the flat earth. I think both you and I know that the earth is flat. Oh boy, <laughs> that's a good way to open. And that we certainly don't live on a round ball spinning at 1,040 miles an hour hurtling through space. I think the theory is a lot more believable than the Big Bang Theory itself. Is your magazine simply prohibited to speak about flat earth? There are thousands and thousands of people every day getting on board with the flat earth theory, yet your magazine, being the kink of conspiracies, refuses to speak about it. Why? I would be stunned if this letter or email makes it to your magazine and would certainly understand why you wouldn't print it, but I've got to be honest here. I simply wait for the day when I can see an article in Nexus Magazine talking about the flat earth and how we have all been deceived. We simply do not live in a spinning ball with gravity said to be magically holding the oceans down while we hurtle through space. Please tell me, Duncan, why this hasn't been in your magazine years ago. Sincerely, Clint. Clint is a regular email of mine, and he sends me a lot of interesting things. This is what? Oh, that's from Celeste, and I can't read that. 
Um, her, her stuff is not exactly, um, it's pretty ethereal and I, I don't, I respecting her privacy. I don't want to read it. This one's called important really. Hi, Mark. First of all, I want to thank you for everything you stand for. I have watched every video I could find for and against Flat Earth. Most are your videos and interviews. I have possibly some great theories as well as many questions that are driving my brain nuts. I am a believer that the world isn't a ball, but without others around me that have had the same beliefs, it is difficult to just rely on the internet for answers. I have been given a bad dice roll on health. I have a degenerative nerve disorder a disorder along with heart complications. They tell me every month when I go to the multiple doctors, I don't have a lot of quality of time left. I'm 44 uh, year old man lived through the eighties as a child teenager. It wasn't, wasn't the best time of my life for other reasons. I would love to be a guest on someone's show and, or help with meetups in or near the Detroit, Michigan area. I need these questions. I have answered by an open-minded, smart person as yourself. I am a Jaronism fan, ODD, Patricia, etc. The awesome circle, as I put it. Oh, that's nice. The circle that went to the past Canada exposition. I don't want to refire my quality of life before, I'm sorry, retire my quality of life before I can get questions answered and talk with like-minded peers. I, like you, set out to prove the ball earth and could not. The moment you also said that made me feel legit uh, what my mind and findings and feelings and thinking, please help a fellow thinker out. I know you probably get 10 of these a day. Trust me. I don't stumble as I used to, uh, be in sales the majority of my working life. And I know my way around a mic and talking with others, please help best to you. It's from Ryan. All right. I will track down Ryan and see what's happening with him. This one's called what keeps Neil deGrasse Tyson awake at night. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Mark. I'm not sure you've seen this video or brought it to your attention. It's about what keeps Mr. DeGrasse Tyson awake at night. You can watch the video here. He starts talking about the mystery from the six minute marker. He starts talking about a newly discovered force, what he calls Fred and Wilma uh, or something like that to give the supposed force a mystery and name. Then he tells his host, Mr. Colbert, that his new force this new force is making all the galaxies go move faster away from each other and disappearing behind the visibility horizon. Not sure how to formulate that exactly in English. My guess is that they, NASA, are pretty much aware of the fact that their lies cannot hold any longer under the huge pressure of the growing flat earth movement. So they are introducing a supposedly new undiscovered force in order to not have to explain the reason why the next generation is no longer able to see all the far galaxies they took with the Hubble telescope, photoshopped, of course. He even tells Mr. Colbert that the next generation of space observers will only be able to see the classic universe. What? <laughs> How convenient for them. So their expanding universe is finally grinding to a halt. I'm curious to find out your thoughts on the subject. Anyway, keep up the amazing work. Kind regards, uh, Tom Korf. And he's out in the Netherlands. All right, as we're winding down, let's see, as I'm looking at my list, I'm, I'm, I'm making a dent. Yeah, all right, we'll read a few more and then we'll call it a day. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark, my name is Cheryl. I have started watching your videos and I am intrigued. You have put forth questions and evidence. I would like to ask, what are your religious views? I have many and would like to know what you think about God or a creator and how it ties together. I do look had much other evidence as I do believe the government does hide the truth uh, of many things from us. Thanks, Cheryl. I hopefully she knows by, by watching the clues where I'm, I'm coming from. Again, I was raised in a born again Christian family, went to vacation Bible school and youth group and camp Malibu. And I was doing all that fun stuff. Um, very ev evangelical back in the day. And then I fell away from it because I went to university. Remember, cause I grew up on a pretty rural Island. And then I was away and I got into the tech industry, which pulls you away even further. But flat, flat earth got me right back into spirituality, uh, which is why I do what I do now. Will I be doing Christian conferences? Eh, probably not. I mean, I don't, I, I mean, there are way better people than me that quote chapter and verse. I don't have uh, a Bible that sits in my car at all times. Uh, but I know a lot more about the Bible than I used to. That's for sure. This one's called NASA Propaganda on Angry Birds 2. Hi, Mark. Uh, if you read this on air, please don't read my last name. Got it. 
Uh, I'm not ready to come out of the Flat Earth closet. See, most people. I've been into Flat Earth now for about three months and listen to your Strange World show regularly. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Just a couple days ago, Angry Birds 2 is now offering NASA helmets for your birds to push their propaganda, I'm sure. I've enclosed screenshots so you can see what I'm talking about. There are exciting things happening in the Flat Earth now, and I think they're getting nervous. Anyway, keep up the great work, and I'll let you know if I come across anything else of interest. And I, I've got to, I've got to look at this picture. Uh, Angry Birds, limited time events, NASA. It's a little helmet with an N on it. And I'm going to see if I can... I'm going to save this off and maybe include that in some screenshots, if, if I like it. All right, how many more left? Uh, two, or, two or three more. Uh, 12 slides. Hey, Mark, thanks for all you do to get the truth out. That's from Jeff. Please send me the 12 slides. Yep, yep, sending those. This one's called Thank You uh, for doing all you do. And yeah, I referred him to um, a documentary guy that wanted to know about flat earth women. And so I mentioned a lot of good ones. And this one's called Hello Again. Uh, should I end on this one? This might be a good one to end on. It's, it's a little longer than some. Uh, Mark, I hope you are well, whatever part of the plane you're in. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to call. I've looked into and all the information needed to understand what's really going on. I've allowed myself the downtime, slightly depressive. Thing is, I have a six-year-old bright and very well-aware son looking up to me for guidance. So it's a vicious cycle. I don't know if I'm repeating myself by saying he's wanting more truth Sad that I sadly can't give him. That's the hardest part of all this. All I long for is my land to grow on and live off with good communion. As a single mom with no savings, breathing room is not readily available. I feel close to a leap into a different life but until then i'm being tormented watching the scum of the plane try and brainwash my son into this cycle of stupidism i find myself painting rooms in the house mowing my <laughs> sorry moving my furniture trying to create a false comfort that i can no longer accept what i've chosen for the time being is to get a degree in culinary school it's always been my passion food and more so feeding people I don't know if this will make sense to you, but have you ever dreamed that you were trying to yell and no voice will come out, or defending yourself, but have zero strength? Well, it's becoming my reality, sadly enough, and I've had it. I don't see any viable options. I'm frozen on the issue of a roof for my son and food. I've always been strong and independent, so I don't know how to deal with this helplessness feeling. Why can't we all get together, even with the Globers? I'm glad, I'll gladly go on an expedition. I should have written you but the last few times. I thought to. I never had regrets, but I'm sort of um, ranting right now. I don't mean to dump this on you. I saw and appreciated your speech at the Canadian Convention. If you stumble across a little legwork needed to be done or specific questions to specific people, please let me know and I'll be happily, I'll happily walk the walk. I once called myself Christian because of my ex-fiance 16 years ago. Ever since then, I considered myself spiritual. I've always felt connected to something or someone and a higher power. So I will take on the Book of Enoch. I'll try and find it online over the weekend. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. In case you have an electronic copy. I, I don't know if I've got an electronic copy, but you can get them. I, I might have one lying around. I can't remember the last time I read it. Uh, but I won't take up any more of your valuable time. I sincerely and truly thank you for all your time spent sharing your research and inspiring me to do my own. Definitely let me know if you're ever in Quebec. I will give you my number as well. Who knows? Maybe I'll be brave and break the ice with the phone and call over the weekend. For tonight, I'm going to get a well-deserved good night's sleep. Thanks again, Mark. Truly, Jamie. Cool. You know what? I'm absolutely going to write her and see what is going on in her head. And it's been a little while. It's over a month. So we will see what I can do there. All right. Anyway, we'll end on that one. Uh, positive one. The uh, thank you for everybody that wrote in so far, and everyone's going to write in the future. You can always email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's m s a r g e n t 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.